Well, I, my campaign, I'm going to suspend my campaign. I'm not going to suspend my desire to help the country. I'll probably go back to Iraq and Afghanistan and get another update. 36 trips has informed me. But the one thing I feel really good about is I did it with a smile on my face. I talked about things that are important to me and somebody better fix one day. Why are you getting out of the race? Well, because I've hit a wall here. You know, my campaign has come to a point where I need to think about getting out and helping somebody else. Here's what I predict. Again, I think the nominee of our party is going to adopt my plan when it comes time to articulate how to destroy ISIL. Can't you do more in pushing that conversation by being in the race than by leaving it, though? Well, to be a viable candidate, you got to have finances and you got to, you know, get on the big stage. What's my the final biggest, straw, though? My biggest problem is that a lot of people like what I say, but not, not many people hear it. This whole process started in a kind of strange way. You couldn't get on the main stage unless you polled at a certain level. Well, if you never run before, that's pretty hard. If you're, you don't come from a political family, that's pretty hard. If you come from a small state versus a large state, that's pretty hard. If you got a lot of money, you're going to do better. So here's what I would advise the Republican Party to do in the future. Never do this again. The bottom line is that people are coming my way in terms of a ro more robust foreign policy. Jeb and Rubio, uh, Marco, are very much in sync with where I'm at. I think Kasich and Christie. And, uh, you know, Donald Trump talks tough, and he's trying to act tough. And, you know, if he gets to be the nominee, I'll give him my two cents worth about a plan that I think can keep the country safe. And I'll make another prediction. I think Hillary Clinton's going to adopt most of this for us over with. What was the final straw then? If it, is, it the, is it not making it on yeah. the main debate stage, you think? I think I did a, a good job in the last debate. You were, you were widely seen as dominating and well, being the winner of the undercard debate. I've heard that said before, but you just can't punch through when you've got a two-tiered system. I just don't see a way for me to get on the main stage in time to make a difference. You often talk about the men and women in the military yeah. that you meet yeah. in your travels, that yeah. you serve with. Yeah. And you say you are there to fight for them. You're the one that is running that will fight the most for them. It's is not, there anyone left in the race that you trust, well, I think Senator, to some, fight some, for them? Really, I think Jeb and Marco get it. I think, uh, I think everybody loves the military. It's not that I care about them more than anybody else. I just think I understand their world, and they truly want to win. Let me give you a story that kind of just caps it all off for me. There was a um, lieutenant commander, Philip Murphy Sweet. He uh, was an engineer, and it was his job to take an Iraqi army base and turn it into a rule of law center, and really one of the worst parts of Baghdad. So they were going to dedicate the courtroom um, while I was there. So I flew over with Colonel Martin, who was my boss. He's uh, Petraeus' legal advisor. And we took a tour of the facilities with, uh, with Commander Sweet and his team, and he showed me around. And uh, as I left, I said, man, you've done a hell of a job. I mean, this came about mm -hmm. in record time. He said, I'm in it to win it. And I took off, and I went one way in a helicopter. A few hours later, he left, and he was killed. And I remember when I went back home, I called his wife. And I told her how sorry I was and how proud she should be. She said, don't worry, I wanted him there. And she wrote a letter that they read at the memorial service that just knocked everybody to their knees. She's got four kids. He could have gone home, but he stayed. And fate determined that I would meet him, and he would get to tell me about what he was so proud of and the accomplishments he had made, and most of it's been lost, and it really pisses me off. Senator, you um, said that he told you he's in it to win it. But apply that to what we're talking about right now. Yeah. My, he my, would, what would you say to his wife on, that on I, what you're announcing today? I have dedicated this campaign to having a debate worthy of Commander Sweet. Do you feel on some level that in getting out of the race you're letting him down? No. I feel like that I've honored his service and I've moved the discussion to a fashion that he would be proud of. Do you have any regrets with this? I race? regret that I hadn't been a better candidate. I regret that I never got on the uh,
big stage. I regret that, you know, I didn't, you know, make it to the final group. But that's just about me. Mm -hmm. I have no regrets about running for president. I am so glad I did this. It was worth it to you. Oh my God, I met some of the nicest people in the world, my team. I've never been more proud of the people who work for me. They took a, a, a long shot bid and did the best we could with it. It has been the joy of my life to run for president of the United States. You mentioned John McCain, one of your closest friends. Oh, that's clearly the highlight of the campaign was what? going to New Hampshire with him. What did he say when you told him not that you're good. getting out? Not good. I told him last night, <laughs> not good. He is a fighter. <laughs> you know, this guy's been shot down like 15 times. Uh, the bottom line about John, he, wanted, he put more into my campaign than he did his own. He came to New Hampshire endorsing me when I was at 1%. Really the highlight of the campaign. The fact that he would say, I think Lindsey Graham is ready above all others to be president of the United States was far and away the highlight of my political life because he wouldn't have said it based on friendship. He's got a lot of friends, but he really believed it. We've fallen short here, mm -hmm. but the fight continues. And to those who are doing the fighting, I'm going to be your voice. To those in the Republican Party who want to win, check my plan out. Hillary, if you get to be president, I'll help you where I can. I hope you're not, but if you are, I'll be there to help you win a war we can't afford to lose.